This is the Dallas Prospect Live with DDP. Every legend was once a prospect. The Dallas Prospect is funded by viewers like you through Patreon and PayPal. To support the show, visit patreon.com forward slash the Dallas Prospect or become a member by clicking the join button. Now let the show begin. And diving into the mix, here we are. What up, Benny? It's been a while. What's up, man? It's been too long since, like, what? After the draft? So, yeah. actually, not that long ago? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> this offseason has been going by so fast that the draft seems like it was two weeks ago. Yeah, no, it feels, <laughs> it feels, uh, it feels longer than it really has been, but... Yeah, it's been an interesting setup here for sure. Let me make an adjustment here, kind of piecing this thing together on the fly. Um, just with the setup, I was doing some adjustments with my pole layout and everything for OBS the other day and tinkered with something too much where it kind of created some problems for myself when I was actually trying to get started. And then I guess YouTube changed the way they lay out their live stream setup too, so that left me scrambling as we were trying to start the show. Yep, sounds like YouTube. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> but, anywho. We're here now, and that's all that matters. Yep, yep. And we got uh, some some Mavericks basketball to talk about here. A little bit of previewing to do for the upcoming season, which is damn close. I mean, we're, what, three days away from the season opener? Yep. Yeah. 23 against the Suns, baby. Is that just like a unofficial rule written in stone that we're supposed to play? I guess it's not unofficial and written in stone. That's kind of contradictory logic there. But uh, <laughs> it's like an unofficial rule that we have to open the season against Phoenix every year. It feels like. Yeah, yeah. It kind of it kind of does feel like that. Who do we who do we start against last year? Was it Phoenix? Uh, I think and it was then, Phoenix. I know Luca's first game was Phoenix. I don't remember I know, if it was yeah, last it was, year, but Luca's it, first game was Phoenix. It was against Washington. Oh, yeah, last year was Washington, yeah. But uh, at- Phoenix is very common, I feel like, as an opponent. Yeah. To the surprise of no one first in the house, we had Glare in here even before we fixed and relaunched the stream. <laughs> and then uh, Rangers King and Abraham Young. So what's up? I see we got a handful more people in here as well. I'm very curious to see what kind of uh, delay loop YouTube's got rolling here, but we'll figure it out as we go. Yeah. But... Yeah, so we've got a few things we want to dive into, of course. Now, you didn't respond to my text the other day. You've seen Uh-oh. the proposed punishment for this year, correct? Let me check my stat. I mean, if, I, if my uh, stat. yeah, so every year we have predictions that we make for the season, and this could be any range of things from like Lucas points per game to the overall record, what seed they're going to be. And then we get into some nitty gritty ones as well, like um, so and so's three point percentage, things like that. And you know, obviously, you have an odd number, so that one of us, there's no ties. One of us wins, one of us loses. Yeah. That was the infamous Rajon Rondo jersey bet that I lost. I that was, don't. That was actually like quite fun to muckle up. I think, yeah, for you. I think <laughs> we screwed it up last year though, because I don't think. We didn't do one last year. I mean, I like, think. we talked about it, but I don't think we ever mm-hmm. even figured out a punishment or anything like that. And I damn sure don't remember what the actual, like, items were. So we need to, like, save this file somewhere, like this little list we made of what we're making our predictions for, hang on to it, and actually follow through with it. And you guys can help us with that as well. We know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Yeah, play back this video when the time is right, and uh, we know. Obviously, we've got some time, given that's going to be in, like, June when we actually get final numbers. Although, I yep. guess we could do it at the end of the regular season because we don't have anything in our predictions here that are detailed with the postseason. So, we could do it around that time. Yep, we can. But Yep, I'm looking through it right now. I don't see anything for uh, – I do not see anything for postseason. Okay, good to know. One's pretty subjective, though. Yeah, right, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, one of our topics as well, that's not a prediction thing, we can strike out that we talked about just because we've already had the report counter that, even though even then it was like popcorn topic as far as like the likelihood of it, that mm. being the potential of James Harden. I didn't ever think that was a thing, but no, I, I wanted to at least touch on it just because there were people uh, talking about it in general. So 
Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this was if this is old news, but I think the only um the only involvement they wanted in that trade was to be the third party facilitator and so they could try to swing their way to getting PJ Tucker and that's it. Gotcha. And that's what makes sense. Yeah. That, and and that's yeah. a pretty good one too. I, I would certainly not be opposed to that. Uh let's yeah. see here. <laughs> Rangers King saying uh so Lamar Odom jersey time. No. I'm not doing any more <laughs> jersey bets. <laughs> I wonder how hard it would be to find a Lamar Odom. You probably have to custom make it, and it would just make it all that more yeah. frustrating to have to then tear apart. It, it pained me enough to track down a Rondo one. But yeah, yeah OJ, so OJ which one's harder, OJ Mayo or uh, or uh, Lamar Odom? Odom would be harder to find. I don't think people hate Mayo the same way they hated Odom. Like Odom They're, quit on the team, right? Mayo, he wound. I mean, he started really hot, and then by the end, he was just there. Both, he was just a warm body on court. the court. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's very different. So it definitely wouldn't be as easy as finding a Paul Millsap jersey. In, <laughs> for some, yeah, for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that was a very weird thing when that happened. <laughs> so let's uh, let's dig into the team a little bit this year. Who? Is your who's the the Maverick you think is a probably the biggest X factor for this team? And when I say X factor, I mean you can't say Luca or KP because duh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm trying to be somewhat not obvious with this pick, but it is definitely Richardson because of his ability. Uh, to play defense, to guard, because I mean, you looked at what the team was and how we were we were successful last year was on offense, and Richardson is brought in literally to boost our defensive, uh, boost our defensive ratings and stuff like that, but also contribute a lot on the offensive side. So I think he's a big X factor because I think he can. People are, are I don't want to say complaining, but kind of initially was. Uh, reserved from the Josh Richardson move simply because we were training away Seth Curry and Seth Curry had such an awesome fit with Luca being Seth Curry was a freaking elite right. uh, shooter. Uh, so they viewed us as we're losing a lot of offense, uh, but at the same time we are gaining that much more defense. And from the looks of how the preseason went, it looks like Josh will be able to uh, replace a lot of the shooting not probably not 100%, but let's say 80% of the shooting that we lost with Seth Curry, mm -hmm. but at the same time, bringing way more defense than Seth Curry ever could. So I think the swap is good. I think that makes him our X factor uh, because we can get all the offense in the world, but how well is Josh Richardson going to be able to stop the best perimeter uh, offensive threats on the other side? That's yeah. that's that's going to be how we're successful this season. Freaking dog is barking at nobody. <laughs> But yeah, no, for sure. I, I agree. Uh, Richardson makes the most sense there. And I don't know if you watched the the profile piece I did on him the other day on the channel. Um, I mean, I, I think he's got a lot more to offer this team than mm -hmm. he got credit for. Like you said, there was initial backlash from some of the fans, I, I think, who saw Curry going out the door and they're like, well, what are you doing? You need to surround Luka with shooters. How are you going to take the second best or second most accurate three-point shooter in NBA history away from him and expect us to believe that's a, a positive, like a net gain. And I think the answer is just the overall contribution that he brings to the table. Offense, defense, Richardson brings so much more in a complete package in that way. Mm -hmm. He also gives perimeter help where Luka's not going to have to guard opposing point guards or anything anymore. The best uh, weapon on the other team, as far as the perimeter is concerned, will go to Richardson now. And that lets Luka not so much hide, but, you know... Uh, be able to save himself a little bit more for the offensive oh, end of the floor yeah. where that's where you really need uh, Luka Magic and everything like that. Plus, in Miami, Richardson was like 16.6 points and four assists per, per game. And mm -hmm. he's a career 36% three-point shooter, but we've seen how many guys come in here, play with Luka, and raise their averages. I mean, even in the last year, Luka's rookie year, but the last year we had guys like Barnes and Wesley Matthews both of them saw increases in their three-point percentage playing with Luka as well. Obviously, Tim Hardaway Jr., a guy that was coming in 34 35%, and he shot like 40% from three last year. Like Luka's going to find these guys and give them better looks than they've had anywhere else. And then, as I mentioned in that piece, um, wide open threes, he was like 47% or something 
uh, wide open shots in Philadelphia, which is very, very key, especially when, as I detailed in that profile piece, the Mavericks with Luka generate the most such looks per game. That's any shot with like at least six feet between the shooter and the defender. So that works majorly to showing what he can bring in that regard. And we kind of saw it a little bit in the preseason, although you can't expect these kind of shooting splits. He went 11 of 15 in the preseason, shooting from three, Richard said. That's <laughs> if 73%. You would keep that up, you would keep that up all season, that would be... <laughs> That, that would be beyond historic. <laughs> but uh, 11 of 15, that was 3 of 4, 5 of 6, and 3 of 5. He, he slacked a little bit in the last game. He missed a couple of them. Yeah, so he missed like 2? Yeah, that, that totaled out to like 15 <laughs> points a game, 3.7 boards, 2 assists, 73.3% from 3, and 62.5% <laughs> from the field. Like, that's the... That's what he did in the preseason. Granted, it's preseason. I'm not trying to like say like, oh, there you go. That's what you got right there. But I think the Mavericks, for how far they can go this year, it it really hinges most on him. That's why like the the thumbnail for that video on the profile, I kind of hinted. I put an asterisk by it because you know you can't really clarify it in the thumbnail. But uh, yeah. I, I think other than Luca and KP, he's got to be the most important Maverick this year. Be, between yeah. being their most versatile, experienced perimeter defender, I think a fully realized Dorian Finney-Smith already, and being able to add to the offensive side what he brings, I think it's I think it's a slam dunk. And the fact that you got pick 36 and a guy like Ty, Tyler Bay, who's got a little bit of Sean Marion to him, um, just in kind of the, the tools and everything, I think that's phenomenal value. That's beyond a no-brainer. You see, it seems it seems to me like I I love I love Seth Curry. I like we talked about before. I remember when we signed him the second time. I let I let out an audible scream just out of pure excitement. But that trade was definitely a win for the Mavs. I mean, yeah. for us to get the better player and a pick on top of that, uh, I mean, let's be let's be real. We love Seth, but e- even as such of a poor fit as Josh Richardson was with the Sixers. I think he still averaged more points than Seth did here. He did. Yeah, he averaged like 14-something last year, and Seth was like 11 or 12, I want to say. Yeah. So, I mean, you put him in a perfect fit. We we can probably – I don't want to, you know, try to predict anything as of right now, but we could probably see him, you know, 14, 15 points a game, um, probably up there with Tim. He could probably be the third leading scorer on this team, if not Tim is, just because Tim is – he has less defensive responsibilities as – as uh, Josh, but I mean, if for what he's going to give offensively is going to, oh my, I mean, defensively yeah. for us to get that type of offensive numbers from him, that's, that's exactly what we needed. Exactly. I mean, it's probably the second best fit uh, next to Luca than if we're talking about like small pieces, not big pieces next to Drew Holiday. Like yeah. everyone was clamoring for Drew Holiday because he was, he would have been such a perfect piece next to Luca. And you know we weren't gonna get, we weren't gonna give away three first round picks, two pick swaps for him. No, no. <laughs> and not only so, that, you control Richardson through next year as well. I know you would have had that as well with uh, Drew, but it, it's just yeah. the fact that you have the value of his contract, a much more reasonable value at that, and you're still able to control him even through next year. I think is really, really an underrated aspect of this deal as it, well. It's not like it's not a rent a player. Or... Is it a team option or is it a player option for next uh, year? I think it's uh, – it, he's option. an unrestricted Probably. free agent in two years. Um, I don't even know that it – I don't know what kind of option it is. Maybe, uh, Max, if you know that in the comments, someone dropped. But I okay, think it's no, – he says it's a player option. So there you go. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I'd like to see what they do. I mean, obviously, you got to see what the on-the-court fit is. He was saying – you know, he's kind of talked about his time in Philadelphia – um, here's a quote from him on that. He said, people can say what they want about my year in Philly, but that was a tough situation for me. I think I would fit well here. So it's, it's interesting as well. Just the, you know, Carlisle's talked about that as well, saying, you know, that Richardson was a guy from afar that he's always felt would fit well with Luca and that he was someone they had their eye on. So I really like what they were able to bring question. I haven't thought about this. This just popped into my head was, in, in the Goran Dragic trade that wasn't, was he one of the guys Dallas would have been picking up? No. No. It would okay. have been Dragic, Kelly Olenek, Derek uh, Jones Jr., and I think that's it. Okay. I, I was curious was, there for a second. I was like, if he was included on, in that, that shows prolonged pur- pursuit of him. 
and yeah. uh, would have been an interesting element as well, kind of make you reevaluate that trade in hindsight. But <laughs> imagine if you can have Jay, uh, Jay Rich and Seth Curry. That would have been, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> that would have been interesting for sure. <laughs> but yeah, so I I, th I think we agree obviously on that that uh, Richardson is the biggest X factor for the Mavericks this year. I think they will go as far as he can, as far as his impact and fit. Uh, can take him, you know, like it, it's a guy who I think should have a career year. That's huge for him, especially as he looks for a new deal. Um, if he's got a player option, then he might be opting out very soon looking for a new deal. And so, uh, you know, it, it's you might find him back, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that it's a, a, a high value spot, fit. So interesting. I, I like the idea if you could have it where Hardaway doesn't have to be like your penciled in number three guy, but could be a guy that kind of trades back and forth between him and Richardson a little bit that way. That way it feels like even less stress of what you're asking of Hardaway. And mm -hmm. maybe that can allow him to play a little better. Cause even though he shot 40% from three last year, you definitely had plenty of games where he was just he thought he was the flamethrower, but he was just throwing <laughs> buckets of water everywhere. <laughs> like not good. So I mean, he, he, do, he does that every now and then, but if he, if he shoots 40%, I don't mind it. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Fair need enough. those irrationally confident guys in your team. So Sometimes. Let, let's move into our next topic here. What are some potential concerns you have for this team this year? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and lead off with this, and this is a topic that um, Mass Twitter has been going on. Um, I think actually for <laughs> two two years because this was a big topic uh, last year as well. But that is uh, the Dwight Powell and and his role on the team and should it be minimized? Should it be kept where it's at? Should he be the starting center even when KP comes back and we roll KP at the four? Um, even our offense took off after he left. Um, here's my concern with um, this is actually my only concern with with the Mavericks and this team that we were rolling with uh, this year is. I don't know what Dwight Howard, not Dwight Howard, Dwight Powell has on Rick or whatever Rick thinks about Dwight Powell, but the fact that he, the amount of minutes that he gets, it's I, I don't think it's ideal, honestly. Everyone knows Maxi Kleber is probably not probably is definitely the better option, but I think Rick wants him to come off the bench, I guess, for more roster balance or more lineup balance. Uh, which makes sense. That's what he did with you know, Jason Terry. Jason, but I mean, but um, I don't think Dwight Powell, especially coming off the injury, mm -hmm. uh, even though he didn't look, he didn't look like that was a huge, that was a huge issue. But I don't think he's the type of player that would garner automatic starting center status. Or even if you come back from a debilitating injury, you automatically get inserted into the starting lineup. I don't think he's that type of player. Right. Um, he's the type of player that he needs to fight for, uh, fight for playing time. Now, I don't know that my main caveat is I'm not in practices. I don't see a hundred percent of what Rick Carlisle seeing. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe that's the difference between why Dwight Powell is getting a whole lot more playing time than uh, Willie Colley Stein. But what Dwight Powell brings to the table is, I mean, all he is is a great rim runner. He's a, I mean, he's a great finisher. I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, hinder what he can or what he can or can't do. But I, he's, a, he's a hustle player, and that, that's the type of players that you bring off the bench to create a spark. Mm -hmm. uh, he still hasn't proven that he has a consistent or reliable, not even a respectable three point, sh a three point shot to where you know. He's usually left wide open, and he had like it's it's pretty much it, it kind of kills our spacing uh, based on what we saw when we had uh, Maxi and, and we rolled with KP on the lineup. So if we if we're if we're gonna do what we did at the start of last year when we have KP at the four and right. and uh, Dwight rolling, I I don't think it does well for our def our, our defense. The, yeah, the um, team was be definitely better when KP was running at the yeah. five than at the four. Mm -hmm. I, I think. I think part of it is I, I agree. Like I'm a little surprised that it looks like he's just going to slide right back into that role as if he never missed a beat. I'm I'm a little impressed, honestly, that he's back 
to this degree already from the Achilles. I really mm -hmm. thought that was going to be more debilitating for him than it appears to be. Granted, it's a small sample size so far. It I definitely do... looks like it definitely looks like the Achilles injury is not as devastating to the uh, to the career as it used to be. I definitely think we're beginning to catch up in terms of modern medicine and stuff like that. Uh, so, because I mean, Kevin Durant looked good. Uh, John right. Walker. It, it's one of those things that's certainly improving, just like ACL yeah. used to be a ACL much more devastating be, yeah. injury than it is now. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I would like to see a better distribution of minutes there. I don't really care if he's the starter. I care about how many minutes he's getting, right? I want to yeah. see more for like guys like Willie Cauley Stein. I want to see, you know, Maxi, like you said. I don't know if I necessarily, I, I like Maxi coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it's just kind of one of those things where until somebody else kind of grabs that brass ring for if, Rip, if he's, he's if just going to kind of fall back shooting, like he did. If Maxie's shooting the way he's shooting, please keep him on the bench. Because or if he's shooting I, like I, the playoffs we're last definitely year. Gonna need that. We're definitely going to need that uh, to help with uh, the lineup with, uh, with the second unit. Or because if he, it's he, like he, last he, year in the playoffs where Maxie was like one of 21 or something from three. Yeah, you know, he, like that's what he used up a lot of energy garden quiet. The, the truth is somewhere in the middle is basically what I'm driving at here. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to see what Rick does with the front court. I'd like to see more minutes distributed better on that. Um, I don't yeah. care if Dwight's necessarily the starter as long as we're still getting good minutes for Maxi and for like Willie Cauley Stein and all of that. So it's it's an open door situation. Uh, if Dwight still has that element of rim runner and finishing like alley oop passes and all of that, then you mm -hmm. still have something. He's got to improve on his three point shot, find a little more consistency there. And there's times in this preseason where defensively he looked just way flat footed and beat. You know, mm -hmm. they've they've got to see where he's at on that. And maybe they're trying to assess that. You know, it's preseason. Maybe they're trying to assess where they feel like he is on that front, and they're going to make an a, an adjustment from there. But early on, I'm like, I'm impressed with how far he's come. Granted, it was a mm -hmm. January uh, Achilles injury. I know it's been about a year now, but usually that, mm -hmm. that would always hear like a year minimum, right? You'd hear like a yeah. year to a year and a half for that type of injury before. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where he's at on that and where that stacks up. But I, I would like to see them do something a little bit different there. That is a concern for me, what they want to do with that. I also want to see, you know, last year we, we talked about it with the, with the, perimeter defense and just how non-existent it was the fact that you had to basically play one of the main guys guarding Kawhi in the playoffs had to be maxi yeah that speaks volumes to how bad we were defensively like 18th in defense and just not a lot of great defensive guys in that regard you basically had dorian finney smith maxi and then it was like a bunch of okay That's or hard. worse defenders yeah. You got to have something there. And I think that the ph philosophical shift that they've kind of put forth should help them on that front, but they've got to actually like, they've got to actually execute on it. If they can elevate that defensive presence, particularly how they close out games, because obviously they were dreadful executing last year in the clutch, but if mm -hmm. they can actually make strides on those two fronts, like they looks like they have the pieces that they should be able to, but until it actually happens, I remain kind of like a, okay, on paper, this looks good. Now show mm -hmm. me. Like, yeah. so that's going to remain a point for me that until I have seen it and seen it for a little bit, I'm going to remain somewhat on guard about that kind of thing, whether it's the clutch or, you know, defensively. I think if you can be at least around the top 10 defensively with what I expect the offense to remain, I think that this team has a chance to be really good. But obviously, health is obviously going to be one of the biggest factors in that no matter what. It's always the constant uh, you know, what if? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, to I totally agree. Um, it, it should always be, it should always be the case when it comes to <laughs> sports in general. It's like, yeah, sports is not played on paper. Uh, every time we talk about that, I always go back to, I think is the 2012 Lakers when they had, uh, Steve Nash, Dwight Howard, uh, yeah. Kobe Bryant and everyone was basically there. On, I think they were on like either Slam or Sports Illustrated as like basically we were crowning them like the winner. Right. Basically giving them the trophy now. And I don't think they even made the playoffs that year. So it's definitely is a is a show me league. Um, you can have all the the players you want, but can you make it work? So, uh, but at least for the Mavericks, we did make the move to start emphasizing more defensively. Philosophically, we, I can at least put bodies. Um, on uh, Kawhi, I see uh, Ranger Scene on the chat. He's saying 
Maxi may end up still being the dude to guard Kawhi, but uh, I, I, I mean, if it is, that's the case. I mean, cool. But let's say we we get screened, and the person that's screening him is, you know, uh, Josh's guy, or 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 Dorian Finney-Smith, or something like that. We can better we help can, is what you're saying. Yeah, around better him, help. Even if he's still it's not, that it's guy. not like we can. We're not easily easily huntable like we were last year. It's like one screen, and we have Seth Curry on on Kawhi yeah. or something like. That. You know what I mean? So that <laughs> that that's the main difference of last year and can we have all that at the same time maintain a level close to uh what we had last year in terms of offense offensive productivity uh yeah that, that we're right i think so um but yeah i mean that, that's the, that's the main difference that's what i'm looking forward to that, yeah <laughs> uh let me ask this do you have any concerns at all through preseason our initial preview of seeing luca shooting particularly threes that was uh, one of his biggest focus he talked about in the off season and a little up and down. I think he was three of five in the first game. Then he was three of eight and then he was zero of six and shooting threes the last three games of the preseason. Is there any concern there for you? There was times when I thought his mechanics looked a little wonky as well. And that was, that was what stood out to me, not just missing a shot, but yeah. seeing the mechanics not look quite right or quite fluid at times. And, Sometimes you you wonder like it's one thing if you're just getting shots up, but if you start tinkering with mechanics, and I'm not a mechanics doctor or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, if you start tinkering with the mechanics of a shot, you have a ten not a tendency, you have a potential for breaking something a little bit and yeah. uh, creating more problems, even though you made it a central point of your focus in the off season. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just saying some of the shots that he was getting up didn't look quite fluid. Whereas last year he was missing them and you're just like, oh, well, the mechanics looked mostly all right. He's just giving himself a higher degree of difficulty with like step backs and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, it's not really something I'm, I'm super concerned about uh, with the super quick turnaround and the fact that, you know, he came in probably a little bit out of shape because of the quick turnaround and the fact we really, players really didn't kind of know when the season was going to start. Everyone kind of believed that, the season was going to start mid-January, but we kind of had this <laughs> seven-week off season. If you're the Lakers or Heat, exactly. So I mean, it was a little quick. So I'm not. No one's going to be in rhythm, and quite frankly, the beginning of this, the beginning of the season is probably going to be one of the ugliest basketballs we're going to see in a long time. Because that's the case, we're going to see a lot of people probably yeah. resting. A lot of people are going to look off because they didn't know. It's not the fact that the the season was. I mean, the, the turnaround was so quick is that no one really knew when the season was going to come back. I think a lot of players and a lot of a lot of people kind of had the the inkling that we're either going to start in, um, you know, January at the earliest. People were thinking February, March is when we were going to start, and then kind of out of the blue, it just happened to be December twenty um, second. I even thought it was going to be at the earliest it was going to be Christmas. That's what I was. Uh, yeah, it was a couple I heard, of like, days before report, that. I heard like one report of that, like it was. For opening day is gonna be Christmas Day, and I was like, all right, cool. But then they even started earlier than that, so um, you know, players are gonna play themselves back into shape. I really nothing to worry about for me um, as of right now <laughs> until I get more data points. If he's doing this, if he's uh, if his mechanics are off well into the season, maybe it's gonna be cause of concern. But Luca is gonna be one person I'm not gonna concern myself. I'm not con- yeah, I'm not concerned with his production or anything mm-hmm. like that. I would just say the three-point shot, if he's going to continue shooting as many as he does, I do have a little bit of concern there if, yeah. if the fluidity of his shot and the mechanics seem different or not right. I, I don't want him. It's like, okay, either fix it with the mechanics you had before and just get more reps, yeah. or if you're going to start tinkering with the mechanics of it, then for now, shoot fewer. You know what I mean? Like cut it back, not taking six, eight, nine, whatever in a game. Mm-hmm. Make it something like three to five, and you know maybe then hey touch it, uh, touch it then you know like oh okay you're four or five or you're three or five even all right now you can hunt for some more but if you're o of three o of four now obviously he's gonna be a shooter he's got the mentality so he yeah. he doesn't care if he's o of six if he feels like he's got the look or he can get it he's going to try it and you know and he, then and then too I think he also I think he also does it for uh, strategic purposes too. Just so he can keep make sure, honest. Not, yeah, keep that defense honest because that opens up more things for other sure. people. Yeah. So if he, does, if he does a step back, you know, you 
it is not the most reliable shot, but as a defender, you still have to respect it. Sure. You're not going to like go ahead and shoot it, and then he, you know, next thing you know, you're the Clippers at the end of overtime in a game four. But you know, you still have to respect it, and then Luca can counter off that and then open things up for himself and other people too. So yeah, uh, I think that's one of the reasons why Luca's not dumb. Um, if he's shooting over over um, whatever. You know, he's not just going to be like, well, I can shoot it. I'm, I'm going to keep shooting it, even though I went 0 for 6, and everyone else was like 4 for 5 or 3 for three for 5 and stuff like that. It's like, mm-hmm. you shot a little threes and you didn't make any, and everyone else was like 80% for threes. But go on and do your stuff, bro, because he was still opening stuff up for everybody else. It was still good. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, we've mentioned it's going to be the Suns on opening night. That's going to be an interesting game with uh, Chris Paul now, their new-look Suns and everything. Uh, I think the Suns are finally going to probably be a playoff team, and it's been a long climb for them. But as as we always say, health permitting, uh, I think they are going to climb into that race, even though the West is very contentious as always. Um, so that'll be a great preview there. The Suns have also been a team that we have struggled with mightily in recent yeah. years. So first team home against Mavs. Yep, and then in Devin Booker. So. Yep. So I'll I'll be very interested to see <laughs> how that he shakes out. Us again, but That'll look, be a really good test, I think, to open the season for Dallas. A better defender than we usually. Yeah, uh, I think you're locking up a little bit, but um, yeah, that'll be an interesting challenge for the Mavericks on opening yeah, night. A good early indicator. Hold on, I think we got a blip. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm seeing if OBS yeah. is still. It's still going, still connected, but it's a weak connection. So I think it's good now. I think it's coming back. Boom. There we go. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, you're, I hear you and see you. Uh, it's just OBS running it back. So uh, we'll see on this. Freaking OBS. But yeah, what I, what I was saying before, hopefully OBS can pick pick it up. But I was saying, um, you know, we're going to have one of the, the better defenders, perimeter defenders in the league, and Josh Richardson guarding De- Devin Booker. I don't know if we have Dorian Finney-Smith on Chris Paul, but we're probably uh, going to stick with, you know, Tim Hardaway or, or Dorian Finney-Smith. So that's a better option than what we used to have on on what, um, on what Chris Paul. So we we'll match up better. Um, maybe Luca is going to be on uh, – I keep forgetting his name – Crowder. Yeah, Jay Crowder. I, I don't know how it goes, but we, we match up pretty well. My main concern, of course, this goes back to what we said about Dwight Powell, is going to be DeAndre Ayton. Uh, the Dwight Powell, DeAndre Ayton. Hopefully, we can do something because DeAndre Ayton, uh, he's, you know, say what you want. He had the little 25 game suspension using um, PEDs, but he, he's he, he's getting better, and the addition of Chris Paul to the Suns is, I think, is going to impact. Uh, DeAndre the most. Um, he's gonna. Chris Paul is gonna do wonders for for DeAndre Ayton, and uh, hopefully we're gonna do our best defensively to mitigate that. Yeah. With um, if it's Dwight Powell that's gonna be on him, uh, cool. Uh, uh, but if if off the wheels fall off pretty early, hopefully we're able to make the appropriate adjustments. Uh, yeah, I agree. That's gonna be a tough one. So <laughs> let's uh for the let's yeah. skip over the Lakers game for now for Christmas Day. Uh, I want to do a okay. deeper dive on that if we can before that day, but a little bit of a time crunch. Uh, let's get into the predictions here for the season. Again, OBS, I hope you're actually working for me right now. Internet's been up and down in my neighborhood today, so we'll see how that goes. If not, I'm recording oh, all of this and we can post the back half later. Um, so for the well, I have them if you if you need them. Uh, I've got the items. So for our first prediction, we have right. the over-under for the Mavericks record at 47.5 wins. I'll let you go first. Do you think the Mavericks win more or less than 47 games? I think they're definitely capable of winning more than that, depending on how many games are, are uh, you know, Kristaps going to miss, Luka going to miss. And, of course, this whole season is going to be wonky because we don't know uh, who's going to get hit with the uh, COVID protocols and stuff like that because I think – if anyone tests positive, it's automatic, what, 12 days? Something so that's like a that, couple yeah. of games. So hopefully, yeah, so hopefully, you know, the right people don't get <laughs> don't get uh, positive tests or positive results. 
And uh, if, if everything goes as planned and runs as smoothly as, as it can, I definitely think we're capable of winning over 47. Okay, so you got the over. Uh, I'll put the over okay. if I'm a bet. Um, I've also got over on this. I think the team is... So, I mean, let's see. So how many games overall is the season? Is it like 72? 75. 72, 72. 72. 75 was last year. Okay, so I've got them at 49 yeah. wins is what I had penciled in just because of the length of the season. But the win percentage, I think, would be something like 53 or something at that point if you you know, followed it out full mm -hmm. season. So I think I think over as well on that. So we're both down on that. Uh, do you think they are over or under the three seed? Which I guess the middle ground there would be like, well, what if they are the three seed? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, an interesting question. Yeah. I'll, I'll roll for, first I on thought... that. I think, uh, I think the Mavericks, ideal everything goes right, I think they could be a two. I think even if they have yeah. some hardships and things, you know, a little bit of health like KP and Luca both missed, uh, between them, I think like 18 games or something last year, something in thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So in, in that situation, I could see a situation where they're more like the five. I'm going to say, I'm going to split the difference and say, uh, I'll go under very conservatively. And that's my toss up where I could see them being over or under. Not, I could see them being the three seed, but I don't want to say the three seed. And that's just a fall, uh, flaw in my. <laughs> Question premise, but I'm gonna say four seed, so I'm gonna go over, under. Over under four point five seed. Yeah. <laughs> four four or whatever three point five or something. Yeah. I don't know. Ain't no betting, but uh, I mean, I I will take three seed and over. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I got yeah. So three or above, you win that one. Basically, four below, I win that one. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Luca over under twenty nine and a half points per game. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually yeah. take a hair back. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay a little bit under, and I think it's because he's going to have to do less. I think he's going to have more defensive help that he's not gonna have to score mm -hmm. at the same absurd clip. I think if KP looks anything like he did in the bubble, that's less strain for Luca as well. I think Luca's probably gonna have something in the neighborhood of twenty eight still. But I don't think he has to be pushing north and north and north, going over thirty now for the Mavericks to be mm -hmm. a very good team. So I'm gonna take the under. Hmm, that's a tough one. I think I think he can maintain if we, if he maintains what he did in the bubble. I think he can go. What was it? Twenty nine. Twenty nine and a half. I'm oh, sorry. Ugh. I'll take the I'll take the under. Okay. I think with I think with Josh Richardson stepping up and probably scoring a little bit more than Seth Curry did. Yeah. I think his assists will probably go up. Yep. But I think his scoring goes a tad down as well. Yep, I agree. Uh, okay, we're into the last two items we got here, and then I got to wrap this up for this live stream. Uh, KP gotcha. over or under twenty games missed. Keep in mind he's not starting the season. We won't see him until early January. All right, I'm gonna rob my positive juju on KP. That sounded super sus, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will probably be clipped out somewhere. All right, anyway, this is a drop. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna go under. I'm. I'm gonna under. Believe okay. that. Uh, he's gonna. Yeah, I think he's gonna get better health wise. I think he won't miss as many games. Uh, hopefully. I think low end, he's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm just trying to be positive. That's what, sure. I'm, that's what I'm doing. Sure. All times probably proves that he's probably going to miss the part. I think uh, low end, he'll be somewhere in the 15 range. I think high end, it could be as high as 23, yeah. 24. But uh, I'm going to go, I said 20 and a half games. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go the over. I'm going to say it's like 21 or something to that effect. I think he's, I think they're going to rest him more and that still works into that favor. And so I'm going to go with that. Uh, okay. And then there our final one here. Okay. Uh, Josh Richardson. We yeah, both have him as our X factor. If you ask, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So our last one here going into Josh I'll Richardson, our X factor for this season. <laughs> Do you have him shooting over or under 
forty and a half percent from three. Again, he's a career 35, 36% shooter. I'm going to say... I'm trying to be positive again, but the real, the realistic me is going under. Um, yeah, let me go under. Okay. Uh, being probably 38. Okay. 38 points. So still a career year in that That's regard. Right at, which is still good. Yeah. The form. I yeah yeah okay so let me think here I want to do a quick assessment if you will based on where we've fallen in our predictions mm-hmm. early on so you uh you, you had you just want to be punished that's what it is we both went over on the wins you took the over I took the under so we're separate okay. there I'm making sure that we keep enough that we can actually like do this since we agreed on one of them i'm trying to make sure we have enough that we have a tiebreaker essentially uh luca over under we both went under so that takes out two of them it's basically now a best of three uh kp over under you went under i went over so we're separate on two there and you have under on this so i'm gonna keep i'm gonna make sure that we stay opposite enough on this i'm gonna say josh richardson is over 40 and a half percent that is to say, I mean, you could go, you could go under, and then we can have the chat come up with a, a tiebreaker. A, a tiebreaker right, right. We quick. we can figure that out. I I I'm thinking he's going to be like a hair over where it's like forty point three percent or something like that. I'm gonna give him that benefit of the doubt. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that line there. So we got three at least that we're on opposite sides of, and uh, right. our detailed uh, punishments. For the loser we might here, need, we might need to, uh, a uh, tiebreaker though. Uh, if we need I'm a tiebreaker, we'll figure that one out as we go. We'll let the chat get in on that. Um, so, in the event, if if I lose as I lost the first year with the Rondo jersey bet, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah. So, this is a uh, this is dating back to what like eighth grade or something stupid. There was some there was some dumb uh John Cena. Seventh grade. Seventh grade? Okay. So John Cena, yeah. his old old wrestler. Seventh grade, seventh white grade gimmick. Science class. Yeah, I so know. I memorized uh his old theme, which was called Basic Thugonomics, <laughs> which is already the whitest thing ever. And uh <laughs> what's funny is until like I don't even know how recent you actually thought that I wrote that. And I was just like, e- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I wrote that. I didn't so, watch wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> if I if I lose, I'm going to have to basically re- not recite, like basically like perform it. Thankfully, it's a rap because I have no actual singing ability. And uh, so that's what's <laughs> on the line for me. If I lose, I'm going to have to perform Basic Thugonomics by John Cena uh, on a stream. <laughs> If you was that lose, the actual title of the song? For Basic real? Thugonomics, yeah, yeah. It's in the it's in like the little nice. chorus jingle. I don't, uh, I never did that part. I just did the actual verses. Um, and oh if gosh. you lose, we're gonna we're gonna give it like a Mavs flavor. But if you lose, we're going to have you do a basically Mavs rendition of Ice Ice Baby for the channel. So either way, one of us is gonna look like a damn fool, and that's pretty safe way to go about it but that's what we've got yeah <laughs> penciled yeah. in on the line here um penciled in on the line here for this year's predictions we'll fine tune as we need to but i think we've got a decent little layout here if we need to add an item here or there we can do that but uh i like what we've got here so let's see. I know this chat's been a little, not the chat, the stream has been a little all over the place in terms of its connectivity. Um, I'll keep trying to figure out what's going on with that. There's probably a way to optimize my settings better. It's the newer computer, so I'm sure I can optimize my settings better for OBS and get a better output, stronger output, more reliable output. But uh, I'll keep tinkering with that. But uh, that's basically going to wrap up the time we got for this show. I know this one's a little more condensed, but we got a lot of good stuff coming up here. Obviously, post-game shows will be back. I know, any you're working on organizing some stuff for us as well for some special shows. And uh, we'll figure it out as we go, but a lot of great stuff coming. 
Are you actually there, any? Are you lo are you locked up right now? All right. Well, I don't hear you. So, wait. Are you back? Huh? <laughs> How much of that did you hear me say? <laughs> All right. Well. Lost you, Derek. Yeah, we're going in and out of connection, so I think it's a good off offloading point anyway. So I'm just going to wrap it up. We'll run it back. Uh, I've got this recorded, so I'll probably just upload the whole recorded stream where we don't have the connectivity issue. So I at least got a backup for us in that regard. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to leave a like below, drop a comment, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, all that good jazz. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace. <laughs>